Hello and welcome everyone to SNC Critical Insights. Today we will discuss our thoughts on recent DSPAC transactions in Europe. I'm Olivier de Villemora, head of the firm's European M&A practice. Joining us today are my partners, Carsten Berard, managing partner of our Frankfurt office, as well as Richard Pollack, managing partner of our London office, and Ben Perry, also from our London office. 2021 was a banner year for DSPAC transactions involving European targets. 48 transactions were announced during the year with an aggregate value of approximately $80 billion. This is a sizable increase from the 16 European DSPAC transactions announced during 2020, which had an aggregate value of only $16.5 billion. While market practice continues to vary among European jurisdictions, it is interesting to see what are the recent trends we are seeing throughout Europe in 2022. Karsten, as managing partner of our Frankfurt office and global co-head of our firm's capital markets group, you've gathered substantial experience in all kinds of capital markets transactions and advised on all German SPAC IPOs so far, as well as on the only two successful DSPAC transactions in Germany. What are your experiences with the DSPAC transactions in Germany? Thank you, Olivier, and a warm welcome to everyone. Let me start with a brief market update. SPACs in the German market kicked off with Lakestar SPACs listing in February 2021, on which we advised the SPAC that was led by Klaus Hommels. This was the first SPAC IPO in Germany for 10 years. Lakestar SPAC was followed by five SPACs so far, the last one actually last week, all advised by our Frankfurt office. All SPACs listed on the Frankfurt Stock Exchange are structured as a Luxembourg entity, which allows them to mirror the traditional US-style SPAC structure in all relevant aspects. The Frankfurt Stock Exchange issued special listing rules for SPAC IPOs and welcome SPACs if certain conditions are met, including the proceeds from the issuance of the units are placed into an escrow account, the SPAC provides evidence that its existence will be limited to a fixed period of time, and it is ensured that the vote on the DSPEC requires a share of the majority of at least 50% plus one share, which can include the votes of sponsors and founders of the SPEC. This last condition differs from market practice and requirements in some other jurisdictions, for example, the UK, insofar as it permits sponsors and founders to vote their shares in the general meeting, approving the business combination. This has the consequence of effectively lowering the required approval of public investors. All German SPACs allow their public investors to redeem their shares at the time of the DSPEC, irrespective of their participation and vote at the general shareholders meeting, approving the business combination, so there is no concept of so-called dissenting shareholders. The two German DSPEC processes mirror the US style with a letter of intent including a non-binding term sheet, followed by a business combination agreement and proxy statement in the form of a listing prospectus for the admission to trading of new shares issued by the SPEC. However, in deviation from the US practice, the business combination itself is typically a simple contribution in kind and not a merger constellation. So all shareholders of the target contribute their shares into the SPEC in exchange for new SPEC shares. The Luxembourg regulator requires prospectus like disclosure in proxy statement, invitation to general meeting, covering risk factors of the spec and the target, business description of the target, MD&A, and three years of audited historical financial information of the target, pro forma financial information showing the effect of the business combination, and description of future governance. In addition, the Luxembourg regulator recently required publication of the redacted form of the business combination agreement, the valuation report on the contribution in kind required under Luxembourg law, and fairness opinion of valuation materials on the target. Recent trends show that there is a trend to align the staggered sponsor promote with the lockup of the sponsor to avoid dry income effects, meaning tax charges without any actual cash distributions. We also see a trend towards shorter timeframes to complete the DSPEC, for example, 15 or 18 months compared to the initial 24 months period. Also in recent specs, overfunding of the escrow account was used, which allows redemptions above 100%. In addition, 
Lake Star Spec set the market standard for the sponsor of the spec to cover effects of negative interest on the escrow account through an additional sponsor subscription, typically for the issuance of sponsor warrant at a price of 150 euro per sponsor warrant. It remains to be seen how the market will adjust to rising interest rates by central banks. Some last words on our DSPEC and the DSPEC process. Both DSPECs we did had an approval rate of 100% of the shareholders at the shareholders meeting, even though redemptions varied from less than 1% to 36.6%. We also experienced intensified scrutiny of the Luxembourg regulator with respect to the proxy statement listing prospectus not unlike the SEC's recently proposed rules on specs in terms of high sensibility on conflict of interest, requirement to obtain a fairness opinion or at least disclosure of valuation basis or valuation materials on the target, and in-depth analysis of prospectus disclosure with respect to description of business combination. However, so far we haven't seen any indication towards an extension of liability of the underwriters with respect to the proxy statement listing prospectus as in the US, which would likely trigger comfort and disclosure letter requirements, hence keeping the German DSPEC process rather flexible. Olivier, what is your view on the French market? Does it allow the German practices or trends or are there other specific elements? Thank you, Karsten. Regarding France, there are no specific rules relating to the incorporation and listing of SPAC as French law and regulation already allows the replication of the key features of the U.S. standards. For instance, investors of French SPACs receive units comprised of redeemable preference shares and share warrants. The fund raised during the IPO are also placed in escrow under a separate escrow agreement. As regards the listing process, SPACs have to prepare a prospectus that is reviewed by the French AMF. The provision of annual financial statements for the last three financial years prior to the listing can be waived subject to adequate information provided to investors. It should, however, be noted that SPACs are listed on the professional segment of Euronext Paris, which is dedicated to qualified investors. The first French SPAC, Media One, was listed on Euronext Paris in 2016. Then none were listed until 2020, where the activity arose with the listing of five vehicles between 2020 and 2021, namely 2MX Organic, Accor Acquisition Company, DTEC, Transition, and I2PO. The last one to date is Euroking, which was launched in May 2022 with the goal to acquire a company in the biomanufacturing sector. French SPACs have generally followed global market trends, including the introduction of staggered sponsor promote. More recently, your king shortened the 24-month deadline to 15 months to complete its initial business combination. It should also be noted that the investors will recover 103% of the invested amount if the SPAC fails to complete its DSPAC within the 15-month deadline, leading, as one could imagine, to additional pressure on the founders. On DSPACs, French law is also sufficiently flexible to accommodate such transactions. They can be implemented through various structures, depending on the circumstances at stake and the objectives of the parties. It could be an acquisition in cash of the target, like the Media One Group AB transaction in the media production industry, which was the first French DSPAC transaction in 2017. This was also the structure contemplated by Pershing Square Tontine Holdings, the US SPAC sponsored by Bill Ackman that we advised in 2021 when he looked at Universal Music Group. This pack may also be structured, as it is the case in Germany, as a contribution in kind of the target shares to the SPAC, such as the recently announced 2MX organic in vivo combination in the consumer goods industry. This transaction will be solely financed by the issuance of new ordinary shares of 2MX organic to the benefit of the in vivo shareholders. In vivo will thus benefit from the SPAC's funds raised from the IPO to finance its development. Of course, it could be a mix of cash and contribution in cash in connection with the the SPAC transaction. Lastly, a merger between the target and the SPAC may also be contemplated. This is the case, for example, in the I2PO diesel transaction in the entertainment industry. Note that under French law, cash mergers are not possible.
Under French law, the contribution in kind of the shares of the target or merger will require shareholder vote with a two-thirds supermajority. A prospectus will also be required if the newly issued securities of the SPAC represent over a 12-month period more than 20% of its existing listed securities. In the event of a cash acquisition, a shareholder vote will not be required by law, although some French SPACs provide for a two-third vote to approve the initial business combination, irrespective of the transaction structure. French law also allows the use of a pipe in order to raise additional funds. For instance, the I2PO SPAC intends to raise a maximum of 150 million euros to raise a cash for post-merger acquisitions through a capital increase reserved to its main shareholder as well as financial and strategic investors. However, a DSPAC transaction without a pipe is also not uncommon as it is currently envisaged for 2MX Organic. The two recent DSPAC announcements in France will certainly be followed by others as the five French SPACs launch in 2020 and 2021 near the 24-month deadline. More generally, Global trends on SPAC transaction and the performance of combined group post initial business combination will be closely considered at a time where many French tech companies are considering IPOs. Ben, could you please introduce the latest trends in the UK regarding these SPAC transactions? Thank you, Olivier, and hello, everyone. London has actually traditionally been perceived as a relatively unattractive venue for SPAC listings. And that's due to a presumption under the UK listing rules that trading in a UK listed company shares is suspended when it announces what's called a reverse takeover. And any DSPAC transaction is by definition a reverse takeover. So that requirement for suspension effectively locks up SPAC shareholders until sufficient information about the DSPAC target has been published in a prospectus. However, Over the past year, this has recently changed for qualifying SPACs. And what happened was that in August 2021, the UK Financial Conduct Authority amended the UK listing rules to disapply the presumption of suspension for large SPACs, as long as those SPACs provided certain protections and transparency for investors. And some of those protections, but not all of them, reflect the market standard SPAC structure that has emerged from the US over the last couple of years. To disapply the presumption of suspension, there are certain process requirements that the SPAC must go through. It must first raise a minimum of 100 million pounds from public shareholders on its IPO, and it has to ring fence the cash raised from public shareholders, which can only be used for certain purposes, such as funding the de-SPAC transaction, redeeming shares, or repaying capital if the SPAC winds up. Also, the SPAC must complete the DSPAC transaction within no more than two years of admission to listing, which may be extended by 12 months with public shareholder approval and by six months in limited circumstances and without public shareholder approval. There are also governance features which must be followed for the SPAC to qualify for the exemptions. As regards approval of the DSPAC and the management of conflict of interests, board approval will be required. And any board member who is a director of the target or a subsidiary, who has an associate who is a director of the target or a subsidiary, or who has a conflict of interest in relation to the target or its subsidiaries, will be excluded from both the board discussion and the vote. If a director of the SPAC has a conflict of interest, the board will be required to publish a fair and reasonable statement, which would typically be based on a fairness opinion obtained from an investment bank or an accounting firm. And shareholder approval by the SPAC shareholders will also be required. And as Carsten mentioned, SPAC founders, sponsors, and directors are excluded from that vote. Lastly, the SPAC should also provide a redemption option allowing investors to exit the SPAC before any acquisition is completed. There are also requirements for the acquisition itself. Investors must be given sufficient disclosure on key terms and risk from the SPAC IPO through to the announcement and conclusion of any acquisition. When announcing a DSPAC target, the SPAC will provide a description of the target's business, all relevant public information, material terms of the proposed transaction, and the proposed timeline for negotiation. It will also provide an indication of how the SPAC has, or will, assess and value the target, and provide any other material details about the target and the proposed deal that an investor in the SPAC needs to make a properly informed decision. Following these amendments to the listing rules, 
three SPACs have listed in London, and they've all been structured so as to fall within that exception from the presumption of suspension. And these three SPACs were Hambro Perks Acquisition Company, which raised £140 million in November 2021. Hero Metaverse Acquisitions 1 SA, which raised £115 million in February 2022. And New Energy 1 Acquisition Corporation, which raised £175 million in March 2022. As well as complying with the new UK listing rules minimum requirements, these three SPACs have followed certain global trends, including a shorter 15-month initial deadline for completion of a DSPAC transaction. All three SPACs also offered public shareholders warrants, equivalent to half a warrant per share. Thank you, Ben. Richard, as we know that Europe is highly influenced by American practice, could you please outline the latest evolution of the regulatory framework in the US and its impact on the US spark market? Thanks, Olivier, and good afternoon, everyone. As Olivier said, I'm going to say a brief word on the situation in the US, where there's now quite a lot of regulatory uncertainty. At the end of March of this year, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission proposed a new set of rules governing SPAC IPOs and DSPAC transactions. If those rules end up getting adopted as proposed, there are quite a few impactful changes. One part of the proposed changes would deem a business combination of a SPAC with a target in a DSPAC as a sale of securities, which would provide shareholders a right of action for defects in the DSPAC disclosures whether or not they were offered a new security. There's a second proposed rule that would deem any underwriter in the SPAC's IPO to be an underwriter in the SPAC's DSPAC transaction if it participates directly or indirectly in the DSPAC transaction. Those two changes would change the liability landscape very dramatically for underwriters, and they're already having an impact on the market, even though the rules are not yet in effect. Over the past few weeks, there have been press reports that Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, and Citibank, which together are reported to have accounted for about 27% of U.S. SPAC offerings since the beginning of 2021, will cut back on their work for SPACs because of these new rules. In some cases, it also means that SPACs that are already public will need to find new financial advisors to assist with their DSPACs. In other cases, it will be hard for new SPACs to find underwriters to take them public. To be clear, not all banks are pulling out of the market. I had a discussion recently with one of the boutique banks that's been involved with SPACs, and they're still planning to continue their work, and they're going to implement enhanced due diligence requirements in order to protect against liability. Thank you, Richard. It will be very interesting to see how things develop in the U.S. and the impact it may have on European SPAC listings and these SPACs transactions. Thank you for listening to SNC Critical Insights. For more information about our practice, please visit us on the web at www.saltcrum.com.